Hey everyone, it is about a week before Christmas and I am super excited. Christmas is one of my favorite times of year. Daniel would definitely agree on that. He loves it so much. We have a lot of fun decorating our house and wearing ugly Christmas sweaters and just enjoying the whole season. Ever since that I've become a professional in photography, I get this question asked to me every single year. and. That question is, what camera should I buy, right? Every year we have friends and family members who, um, or even past clients who are interested in either getting into photography or having a baby and wanna have a really nice camera that they can grow with um, their children. And uh, I always give my personal answer. It's different for every photographer. So instead of focusing on a specific brand and model and like what gear you should get. So I wanna focus on three attributes of any DSLR that is going to be really important um, so you can make an educated guess. Most prosumer cameras, which are the entry level DSLRs, are gonna have killer megapixels. They're gonna do pretty well in low light. Um, and there, most of them are gonna have video capabilities that last longer than just a few seconds. So any of those things, if those are on your list of important things, pretty much any make or model is going to give you that. These are other things that I think are even more important than megapixels or video or anything um, that will really allow you to grow in photography if you ever wanna get into it or you just wanna have a basic knowledge of it. These are the things you have to have in a camera. So number one, this is on most even point and shoot cameras to an extent, but what you really want is manual settings. You really wanna be able to control, fine tune how you capture your images and whether or not you learn how to use them, um, having them there is super important uh, because if you do ever choose to grow more, you have that opportunity. So I'm talking about things like being able to control your aperture, being able to control your shutter speed and your ISO. Um, some people call it ISO. Those are things that allow you to fine tune how the light comes into your camera, how quickly your shutter in your camera goes off. Um, and it will allow you to be able to capture what you're seeing. So if you have a child sporting event that you're going to and you want to capture them running across the field, uh, you have the ability to up your shutter speed and you have the ability to freeze them in a moment of time instead of it being blurry um, like a phone or a point and shoot might do. Uh, so that's something to consider. Uh, manual settings, super important. I highly recommend learning how to use them or at least the relationship, what they mean, uh, because you can do a lot with just the manual settings. Number two is can it change lenses? So something else that if you're getting um, a point and shoot, which is what we consider something that you can't take the lens off of, um, you know, it limits you to what the cam camera body can do. So by changing lenses, by being able to grow your lens kit, you're able to grow the quality of your images. By far, you'll hear this across the board, lenses are a lot more important than your camera body. They are what is capturing the light and bringing the image into your sensor. So regardless of if you get the top end beautiful mirrorless camera that's super hot right now or you get a basic entry level DSLR and everything in between is dependent on the lenses that you can use and the ability to change out lenses will allow you to grow with your kit because different lenses will give you different looks different lenses will give you better quality so being able to change out your lenses being able to rent or buy new lenses to add on to your kit will be a huge advantage and lastly, most DSLRs, I think if not all DSLRs, don't quote me on this, come with this capability, but understanding what a raw file is and how that plays into photography is a huge deal too. So most people will hear raw images and they're like, oh, that's what I have to have. But once they take pictures in raw, they don't know what to do with them. There's a lot of different files that a photo can be saved as, but the primary ones right now that are the most popular that you'll see is jpeg.jpg, so that's jpeg, or raw, R-A-W. I want you to think of your camera file as a sheet of paper. So with a JPEG file, um, which is pretty standard across the board. You're gonna find it on every single camera that anybody shoots in. Most cameras will be set, th 
set to that. Um, so a JPEG file is one piece of paper, all right? And you can only do so much with one piece of paper, right? But a raw file is a whole stack of paper. So if you think of a ream of paper that you get for your printer where there's just all of these layers, um, and you can work within these layers. So what's great about a raw file is you are able to tweak each of these layers and just enhance the image, where with a JPEG file, you can only push it so much. So raw files are much more flexible to work with. The only problem with raw files is you can't just print it from that file. You have to then convert it into a JPEG, which means you'll need some kind of editing software. So the standard, even for beginners, is Adobe Lightroom. They have uh, a basic version that is super easy to use, um, very friendly to play with your images, and it imports RAW and exports JPEG. Uh, so that is what the industry standard is. That is what I think most people use. I highly recommend just getting Lightroom. It's super inexpensive and you can do a lot with it. So big question of the season, what camera should I get, right? So you have all of these things. You're looking at different cameras. You know that they have all of these options for you. Um, really what it comes down to, it can be Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji, or Olympus, some kind of off-brand, whatever it is. You're looking at these camera bodies, they have all these things, how do I know what to choose? And really what it comes down to is what feels good to you. A lot of these camera bodies are going to have um, similar controls. Some of them are going to be opposite from each other. Nikon and Canon tend to have opposite controls. Um, really what is most organic to you when you're looking through the menu and you hold it in your hand? Does it feel good? Does it feel like something that you're going to be using often? Or does it feel awkward to switch through menus and get to buttons and things like that? Um, what works for you? And what's your priorities too with the camera? I think that's always something to consider as well. Like when you're going in to purchase a camera, you know, are you primarily looking for a good video camera? Um, that happens to take pictures too? Or are you looking for something primarily for photos with a little bit of video thrown in there? I think that's something to think about as well because it's going to impact um, what you choose to buy. Now personally, here comes my endorsement. I'm a Canon girl, that's what I use. So I'm familiar with the Canon bodies and the Canon lenses. So whenever anybody asks me, I always recommend starting with a Canon Rebel and then adding on lenses as you go. So they'll come with a kit lens. The kit lens you can only do so much, so if you wanna be a little artsy and have something a little bit different, then I recommend getting the 50 millimeter 1.8. Um, it's a really inexpensive lens and it'll allow you to have some fun um, being a little artsy. So that's usually what I recommend for people to just getting started looking for a decent camera. It's not gonna break the bank. Another tip that I give people is you don't have to buy the latest model. Um, models over the past few years are so similar that there's really not a huge difference in them. So even if you get one that is a couple of models down, you can still have a really amazing camera that's gonna last you for a long time. So I hope this has helped you in your search for the perfect Christmas camera. Be on the lookout for a course, hopefully in the near future, that will be covering the basics of what your manual settings are, lighting, composition, things like that. And then I'm also going to be hopefully offering a more advanced class um, and potentially business classes again in the future. So be on the lookout for that. If you're interested, shoot me an email at mavenledkey at gmail.com. I'd love to talk to you further about that. After Christmas, you're gonna start seeing more of these videos and just little tips and tricks to help you in your path and your journey um, for just having really wonderful photos documented. Um, I think whether you have them documented by a professional or it's with your iPhone, you know, making sure that these things are documented for future generations is so important. I hope you guys have an amazing Christmas and that you get everything that you've wished for, but mostly what I wish for you guys is lots of quality time with the ones that you love. So until next time. Okay, I love you, bye. Beyond the look like.